What's going on guys? It's your boy Trolltech here for another video. So today we are doing a 17 video, which we haven't done for a while. Um, so we are going to be checking out the new, well, it's, I think it's the title track for their new album. Maybe I might be wrong. Um, it's called Love, Money, Fame. So people have been recommending this on every fucking video, basically, that I've uploaded. So I thought, why don't we check it out? Um, and I haven't done 17 for a while, so I thought it would be a good idea. So we're going to do these reactions a bit differently. Um, and the reason for that is because I did the Tae Young video, right? And I, and I, I love the video. Don't get me wrong. It was a fun, um, it was a really good song and everything. But I, as I was watching the video, I was just like, I don't like this. It's just, it's too low effort. I don't like it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change up my video style a bit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do my reactions as I react to them, right? React to the video, give my thoughts, so on and so forth. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to kind of it, like end my recording of the video and then spend like an hour or two actually re-watching it and analyzing whatever I'm doing and then give like a deep analysis of my thoughts of what I've just reacted to. That's what I'm going to do. That's That's basically the way it's going to work. Cause I just don't, I don't know. The last video just wasn't good. It wasn't good quality video. I, I don't know. It was just, I don't know. There was something about it that was missing. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to try that, see how people feel about it, how I feel about it. And then, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So without further ado, let's get into love, money and fame by 17. Love money. Wait, wait, is DJ Khaled is on? Oh my God. What the fuck? Okay, I didn't even know what they, I didn't, I didn't see that. Featuring DJ Carlton. Okay, that's a weird collab. Like, not the fact that he's a Western artist, but like just out of everyone humanly possible, that's the last person I would have think um, 17 to collab with. Yeah, let's do this. So I think that's um, Woozy, right? Let's do this. Oh no, this is um Jonghun. Jonghun? Jong? I don't know how to say his name. What's going on? Oh, oh, that scared the shit out of me. I thought my volume was too low. What is what is love? Got the arms out. Oh, uh, that was DJ Carl. Another one. Yeah. Like Mingyu is not Mingyu if he doesn't have the arms out. I'll tell you that much. No, I'm joking. Oh, oh, my boy. Baby, I love the way that they've they named the song. You think it's going to be a song about like money and bitches and whatever else you know but like it's the opposite of that that's a really cool thing they're doing anyway sorry let's go back baby baby that's that's kind of addicting oh oh my top three guys in 17 so far is definitely uh, Escoops, obviously. Um, Vernon, Dursley. No, I'm joking. Vernon and Woozy. Those are my top three, like, guy, like so far out of everything I've checked for sure. Just Woozy, just because I always love the producers usually. Um but I'm, I'm really like Vernon slowly as well. I really like S Coops. Um, he's the guy that first took my attention very fast. 
I also like the eight though. I like them all, to be honest. They all give bring their own vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ignoring the talk shows. Oh, the shoulders out. Baby, baby. You always have that one guy in every group that's just ethereal. Like you can't believe they're real. This is Jong Hun. Jong Hun? Is that how you say his name? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's the oldest member. I think. I think he's the oldest member. Or is or is S -Coop still? I don't know. I feel like he's the oldest though. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. He's the like the, you know the pretty one basically in the group. Like obviously he's not just the pretty one, but I'm just saying like that because every group has that one guy that's just very over the top pretty. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, who's this guy? I don't remember this guy. Okay. I love that's how he's doing it. That's his own line. But to be fair, DJ Khaled's a fucking a producer, so it makes sense not he doesn't have a lot of like a bunch a chunk of you know um screen time or anything. I really like the, the beat. Love, money, fame. Okay. Okay. Let's watch it one more time. Just so it, it, see if we can spot like little hints or, or stuff, but just like little things in the background. Okay, I was it. I was. What is love? With love. I, I I didn't. How did I not notice he drove off the edge the first time? What the fuck? I'm just curious if they, if we can read the words. Uh, hey, I'm at the, so many things have changed since then. No. Some for the better, some for the worse. The matter, wait, no matter what, I'll always be, have love for you? No. Be here for you. Because, bro, this guy's writing is not it. <laughs> Because to me, love is about experimenting. No, expressing. <laughs> it's like I'll fight violence with kindness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You down, baby. Baby, 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 baby. Honestly, this side of the song is usually not my my speed, but I'm actually enjoying this. It's a vibe. Baby, baby. Never stop loving. 
굉장히 main topic. I can't solve a problem. 그게 나 답지. Time together. 먹지 않는 나의 ice cream. 가끔 노래를 까봐 겁나. 그날이 어. Bro, I've Vernon has one of the smoothest flow, like flows I've ever heard. Like in K-pop, I mean, not I've ever heard. I've heard some smooth flows back in in my day. No, sorry, I sound fucking old. No, but like in K-pop so far, he's got one of the smoothest flows. It just sounds. It's like fucking. It's like what's something smooth? It's like it's like smooth butter. You know, I don't know. It's something just so clean. But what did it say? Motorcycle uh, crash caused by the rider's crush. Interesting. I just realized DJ Khaled was on the on the screen. DJ Khaled and Woozy. Oh, interesting, interesting. Wait, I want to actually see. Oh, interesting. Interesting. It's like, show. I guess it shows like in front of the camera versus behind the camera or almost like what you see versus what's happening in a way, which is really interesting. That's a cool shot. Baby, baby. Honestly, this song only almost seems to be a criticism of um a criticism of like the I guess consumerism of, not consumer yeah but consumerism of just like the entertainment industry of, of like I don't need all these this glitter and fame and money and like all I, all I really need is the avenue to make music and interact with the fan base. That's kind of, that's what I'm getting from this, but we'll see. We'll do a deeper analysis in a bit. Yeah, so even in here, they're just like sitting in a room filled with like fan mail. And then you see like, watch, wait one sec. And you see, like you see all the like, you know, interview, like, f like um, fame things where they were on the show and shit. It's like ripped up and shit. Or it's like, well, we don't really care about that. But the, then you got the mail from like fans. You know what I mean? So. This is giving very like 90s R&B, like not the song, but like the, their body movements and the fits and like the, just the like sensuality almost of this part. 17, Khaled, another one. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of people talk shit about DJ Khaled, but I actually feel like he's one of the funniest dudes on the planet. Like just, it's, I don't know if he does it on purpose or if he's actually like that. If he's actually like that, he's, he's funny by accident, but like, I don't know, so many clips he does, and I'm just like, that is actually fucking such a good meme. Like, if he's doing it all on purpose, he's a comedic genius. I like the abrupt, like, just stops, and then it's total silence. I feel like that's really well done. So that was my reaction to love, fame, money, love, money, fame. I don't, I, I don't know the order, but that was my reaction. So now we're going to get into some kind of an analysis of it. So I've written down some notes that I have um, prepared 
just so I can keep my thoughts in order as we talk about this. So I would be looking to my screen every once in a while um, just to f like really um, reorganize what I'm thinking. Okay, so love, money, fame, um, love, money, fame. Okay, that is the correct order. Is a song. It's a song. And at first you can view it as like a classic, typical song just based on its name. And then you listen to it, you could be, you're like, oh, it's more talking about love and then like, at surface level, you can just view that. So, oh, it's about love and money and the, the fame and all of that. But if you really look into it, there's a lot of cool things happening in this song, which I'm, I want to talk about. So number one thing I want to talk about, I feel like this song largely, it is very much a interesting, I guess, commentary on the dichotomy between having love and money and fame. And even within the love, it, it dissects, how I feel like it dissects the different types of love because you can have a love of fame or love of money, right? But they really, I feel like analyzing the concept of love in the context of the love, I guess they feel for the art form, obviously, um, but also with their fan base. But then I feel like there's a caveat in there where they're almost analyzing how love is how do I explain it? It's like, cause in my, the concept, in the concept of love when it comes to fans between the artists, I always find a bit interesting because, you know, I think there's like a line, there's a line where the love becomes dangerous, right? Um, where the love does is not even genuine love for the art anymore it becomes this thing where a fan will have an image of what the idol or the artist is supposed to look like and supposed to be like so they love them according to that image in their head and once they step out of that image the love ceases to exist right um and that's not what they're talking about in this song but i'm just saying that's my analysis of that idea of love in the context of like loving your fans it's a really i think it's a slippery slope um which I feel like there's like underlinings of that in a lot of K-pop songs. And then I don't think they really analyze it in this song, but it's just something I, I'm, I was thinking about. But so I find that interesting. You're talking about love with, uh, with the fan base. But again, it's like the line, this song, I like it. Don't get me wrong, but I do feel like it blurs the line a bit where this is an issue I have with a lot of K-pop songs. So this isn't, like an attack on a certain group or anything, but this is an issue I have a lot on a lot of these type of songs where they are perpetrating that um, parasocial obsession with a lot of um, fans. And I understand that might not be their intent or they might not have, I don't know how much power they have when it comes to lyrics. It might be a company thing. It's just something that I always feel a slightly bit hesitant about. It's not that, it's not a bad, the lyrics aren't bad, for like no the lyrics are good i mean like the lyrics aren't negative it's but it, i can see it perpetrating that imagery um you know, because they're talking about oh i don't care about any of the fame or any of the, everything else. all we care about is our love for you guys which can be viewed positively but i could also see where it could it, it's a slippery slope i feel anyway let's move on um let's talk a bit about kind of like breaking down the lyrics a bit I, what I love is like speaking about that concept of love. I feel like this is a, the song shows a perfect ju juxtaposition of like love and fame and money, right? Because there's a level where those three things conflict, conflict with one another, but then they also kind of hold one another up, right? Because you know, their whole idea is like, oh, we don't care about the fame or the money. We just care about you guys, which is a cool sentiment. But let's let's look at the real, like realistically, love that you have for them doesn't exist without their fame. Like, that's just a fact. If 17 weren't famous, you wouldn't know who they are. Um, You wouldn't feel like this obsessive love for them because you wouldn't know who they were, right? So... Yeah, and then if you have fame, then inherently you have money, 
right? And that's an important part because if you don't have money, you can't make the music for the people that you're making it for, you know, the fans that you love, right? So it's like, at one point, those two things can conflict with love because, you know, you can fall in, into that pit of fame and money and forget about where you came from. But then on the other side of things, it's like you can't have the love without those other two things in a lot of cases. It's not to say you need the fame and money to have fans that love you, but generally those two things interlap, but then they also conflict against one another. So it's really interesting, like, just where neither one of those things can exist without the other almost in a way um they can exist but they can't exist in a enduring way if that makes sense so another thing i think this um song does really interestingly where love is the ideal of the story that they're telling right that's what we want that's what you want your artist to feel right that's the that's the ideal artist, right? But then you have the realities of a lot of artists and not only because uh, it's not because they're greedy or whatever, like the money fame part, it's not because of that. It's merely because if you don't have the money and greed, I mean the money and uh, fame, then you're not going to make a future in the industry. You know, there's, you're not going to keep making songs. You're not going to keep experimenting. You're going to keep doing what keeps your, a roof over your head, right? What keeps you, your income safe. Like you're going to keep doing the same thing. So it's like, I feel like fame and money is the harsh reality that you need to deal with, right? While doing things just for the love of the game. Like you want your artists to do that, but sometimes they just can't, you know? And I think this song kind of does talk to that concept where it's like a bit where even though we don't care about the fame and the money, like that's not the important part. It's like without that, we can't have, we can't live the ideal of just making our art through our love for the game and for, for our fans. You know what I mean? Um, so that's really interesting in my opinion. Anyway, also I think this song does this really interesting thing it's a very, I don't think it's a very obvious commentary, but I feel like there's a slight commentary on like the public versus the private um, kind of personas of the group. Because it's clear, like the, the people that you see on the screen, it's not that they're fake or anything like that. And I'm not just talking about 17. I'm talking about all artists of all kinds. It's not that they're fake per se. It's just like the persona that you see is not who that person is in reality. Like, and I'm not saying they're putting on a mask or anything, but, and I'm sure there's similarities with their real personality, but you, the, the thing about it like this, let's say I meet you for the first time, right? Just a random person, just not a famous person, just a random human being, right? There's an image and a mask that, that we put it on until we trust each other more and more and more and more and more, right? So from that angle, the personas that are being presented are very clearly being created in a way to keep the artist safe and then to also make them, I guess, more approachable or, or more, I guess, comfortable for fans to be like, oh, I really connect with this person. Um, but in reality, if you, let's say you met, um, let's say you met Woozy and you didn't know he's famous or anything, you just met him for the first time. And he, and he wasn't famous or whatever, he would not be the person that you see with the persona he presents because he's just meeting you for the first time. So he's going to put on a mask regardless. So that's my whole point on like uh, just the whole idea of personas in K-pop. They exist. To be like, oh, Woozy is exactly like he is on on the, the variety shit we watch or something is, it's just, it's false. It's simply false. Um, and I feel like this song slightly gets into that whole idea of personal versus public personas, which I always find really fascinating. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on to the next thing. So this is something I noticed with the, the beat arrangement on the instrumental arrangement. It's like when they're talking about like money and fame, 
the music's very, I guess, wealthy sounding. I don't know. It's, you know, we only walk into a place and the music just feels wealthy. That's kind of the vibe. But then when they talk about like love and, you know, talking about love is only that matters, the, the beat kind of softens, which is really interesting. Like, I really like that because it, it, sh- it shows the kind of, I guess, duality of the concepts they're presenting. Because at one point you've got the money and the fame and that just like like intense kind of rich kind of just party vibes. And then when it goes to love, it's like softer and gentler and kinder almost, which is really cool. Um, okay, let's move on. So again, we have a lot of symbolic things which show the difference or the dichotomy between um, the money, fame versus love where when they're talking about the money and the fame, they're in these luxury, these like luxurious, you know, like buildings and doing this crazy shit in these cool cars. And then when they get into the love, it's, it's kind of a warmer, more intimate setting. Like for example, where we see Jong Han, I think that's how you say his name. He's kind of sitting in that room where they're like, there's a fireplace. It looks very really cozy. And then that perfect shot where it's Jong Han on the left, and I think it was Woozy on the right. Where on the right, Woozy's on, on like a set, and it looked like the color grading is very cold and impersonal almost. When it goes to Jong Han, and the the color grading is like warm and like it feels comfortable. I feel like that di- it shows that dichotomy really well. That shot I think is really interesting. Um, anyway, that's something that I found really fascinating personally. Um, let's see. Okay. Last thing I want to talk about with this song, I definitely feel like it's a perfect reflection on the K-pop capitalist machine. You know what I mean? Um, in this way, where I think it show it, it's an analysis of how at the end of the day, the K-pop space is all about the fame and the money. And it's like 17 saying, that's not what we care about, but it is, that is the reality of the space, right? And I feel like this song is, I guess, a declaration of, I think, um, being able to be creative in a capitalistic dominated industry, right? Where Seventy says, these things exist, but we will always choose our love for the art and for the fans over the things that run capitalist machine that k-pop is you know what i mean so i think it's this song kind of is illustrating the balance between the image they need to portray you know the wealth of the space and their private kind of personal lives and their private personal existences and i think that's why that goes back to what i was saying before where personas are really something that exists because it protects the artists and it also maintains the image from the fan side of things. You know what I mean? Um, But yeah, this was a really interesting song because at at first glance, you can look at it and you're like, oh, this is really surface level. There's not really a lot to analyze. But really, there's a lot of cool things happening under the microscope if you really look at the lyrics and what's going on. And I think honestly, DJ Khaled for this type of song is perfect because he's the perfect image of that whole idea of money and fame and living in that bubble. So it's him being there, it shows an even bigger layer of the dichotomy or difference between, you know, what the industry is to what 17's ideal of what they as a group want to be which was really cool in my opinion. Anyway, that was my reaction slash review of love, money, love, fame, and money, love, money, and fame. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoy, enjoy this kind of um, setting um, or this kind of layout for my videos. If you enjoy this, I'll be doing this kind of style way more because I found it fun personally because I'm someone that likes to hyperanalyze a lot of things. So this was fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.